Alright guys, we're back for another Dokkan Battle video, and here we have a Dokkan Awakening for this beast right here. This is a uh, max power, full power Jackie Chun, right? Uh, now this guy was already a pretty solid SSR because he was a support for Kamehameha, but now after his Dokkan Awakening, this guy, it, it's, it's insane, but like for the Kamehameha team, this guy is like a must-have. But it's unfortunate because they buried him in that Dragon Ball Saga banner, which is very difficult to just pull units that you want to, right? I've been grinding the World Tournament, you know, top uh, 500 at least for the last three, four years. And, like, there's many World, like, Dragon Ball Saga units I don't have rainbowed yet. Like, so, this Jackie Chun, it's a shame because he's so good. But they just buried him in that Dragon Ball banner where it's just, like, impossible to get the stuff that you want, right? That's the only thing. Because, like, this guy really should be just, like, a general banner, banner pool SSR or something. Like, a, an actual World Tournament reward card. Because, again, he's he's crazy, right? Like, he's on a lot of teams as well. Like, you, there's definitely a lot of teams here that you're actually going to be able to rock this guy. You know, he is on Dragon Ball Saga, Full Power, World Tournament, Kamehameha. Earthling, Battle Wits, and Planetary Destruction. Um, basically, as long as you're running him with other Kamehameha characters, he is going to be able to get the job done, right? All right, so let's go ahead and jump in. Um, so the thing about him, right, is that he gets 150k defense on super attacks. So, like, we look at it right there, right? So, you know, giving him 100% defense would push him up to, what, like 87k, 88k, or whatever it is right there. So if we went ahead... And then put the other 50% on top of that. So, it, it's like right now, like defensively, he's not the greatest. But, like, with the support he's giving, plus with this other passive he has, he gets one key and he gets 20% attack and defense at the start of every turn up to a max of three key and 80% attack and defense. So, after a few turns have passed, he is going to be very effective. Um, like, he's going to be, I think, very good defensively. He's going to be very good offensively, putting up good numbers. And then, most importantly, for the actual Kamehameha team itself, what many people consider one of the best teams in the game, if not the best team in the game, he is going to be, like, an ideal support type unit. There's very few units that will cover the entire umbrella of the Kamehameha category with support type abilities, right? Like, you look at the Super Saiyan 2 Great Saiyan Man, who's also in this data download. Like, he's a perfect example of, you know, he supports super class characters in there. Still a huge array. You know, you're hitting Gogeta, Blue Cow can Goku, you know, like, uh, uh, STR Vegito. Like, you're just hitting a lot of, like, different, you know, sort of types of, like, characters that are using the Kamehameha, which is going to be very good. Um, but, like, Cell, Goku Black, Majin Buu. Many of those characters would not get the buff from, like, Krillin or, again, this guy right here, this STR Super Saiyan 2 Great Saiyan Man. But now, we actually are going to be able to have, like, this guy, this Jackie Chun. Like, I think he's going to work great as a floating support type unit for the Kamehameha team, right? Like, you could definitely get away with running this guy, no doubt about it. Um, I think he is going to share a lot of links with... Uh, a, a couple of, like, major players, too, on, like, the World Tournament team and stuff like that. The only thing is he does have a couple of those Dragon Ball era links, you know, Incredible Adventure and Guide into the Dragon Balls, which definitely does work for him in the Dragon Ball Saga team. But, I mean, he would make for a good partner with Kid Goku. Um, how many links do we have shared here with LR Roshi? So, we have... Shattering the Limit, Kamehameha... Uh, I think we have, what, Supreme Warrior and then Brainiacs, I believe. Let me see what the top one is. What is this top? Because I, I know Brainiacs is this. This is Brainiacs right here. Uh, let me just confirm. Yep, there's like LR Roshi in them. That is Brainiacs. And then this right here is, I believe, Supreme Warrior. Yep, which is giving key as well as attack. Um, Supreme Warrior is definitely a, a fine link. Right? Like, like for these two to be sharing. All right. So, let's see. He's up to basically 60k defense. Now, we're looking a little bit better, right? By next turn, Roshi is going to be doing a lot of damn damage, man, for what is essentially just like a support type unit, right? So, I'm definitely really, really, really enjoying what we're seeing from this uh, full power Roshi right now. 
All right, he is taking a little bit of damage right there. Not really too surprising, right? Because um, he does get all of his defense on super attack, right? Uh, and then let's go ahead and see what attacks that he gets up to. Almost three mil. Now, remember, he is also greatly raising attack for one turn on super attack. So he is going to be getting higher attack stats with additionals. And then LR Roshi, nearly seven million. Yeah, LR Roshi, it's hard to say. Like, I probably would say I like Prime Battle Frieza a bit better than Roshi, but it's, dude, it's tough. That, I think, is actually a real tough one to decide. Like, like who is actually better? Like, LR Roshi um, or, like, LR Prime Battle Frieza? Like, they're, I think, I do think they're sort of neck and neck. Um, the thing about Roshi is that a lot of the category teams he's on that previously were just, like, like throwaways, like, he's actually starting to be on some very, very good category teams, right? Where I, I think Roshi, like, like, Earthling is a perfect example of a team that, like, you know, right now it doesn't really have uh, a lot of units that are, like, really top tier. But slowly but surely, you know, LR Roshi, Tech Krillin, Videl, Physical TN, right? The Tech TN last year. Like, we're getting a steady stream of, like, very solid Earthling characters now. So, like, that category team is actually becoming, like, more and more viable by the day. So I would not be surprised if, you know, six months down the line... Earthling maybe has like an actual Dokkan Fest category leader, right? Like if they drop, I I think all three original World Tournament winners from Dragon Ball OG Dragon Ball all deserve Dokkan Festival exclusives, right? So I think uh, Jackie Chun deserves one from this World Tournament where he beats Goku. Um, I would also say I do think we deserve um, obviously a dual Dokkan Fest from the 23rd World Tournament where Goku beats Pickle. I think both of those characters definitely deserve a dual Dokkan Fest. All right, so now we have a very, very good rotation here with Super Saiyan 2, Great Saiyan Man. Again, I love how we got two uh, brand new support type units from this world tournament. They're both insane. Both are going to be really good on Kamehameha, as well as a number of other teams. Um, this Jackie Shun is definitely going to be no slouch. He's at 66k defense right now, so he's fully built up now at this point, right? Um, is Jackie Shun on Turtle School? He is not on Turtle... So, okay, so Full Power Jackie Chun is not on the Turtle School category, so he's not getting the support type buff from LR Roshi. I mean, I guess that does make sense, right? Because obviously Jackie Chun is just Roshi in disguise. Like, he shows up at the World Tournament to beat Goku and Krillin down because Jackie Chun thinks, like, if he does not participate, Goku and Krillin would win, right? And that, that is basically what happens, too, right? Like, if not for Jackie Chun being there, Goku... Uh, definitely, honestly, the finals is probably Goku versus Krillin, right? Like, if it wasn't for Jackie Chun beating Krillin, Roshi beating Krillin, like, Goku and Krillin is probably the finals of that world tournament. So, um, all right, let's go and see what he's doing here. Again, almost 70k defense. So, he is able to get to a, a pretty solid defensive number, considering how much damage he's doing. He's doing a lot of damage for just, like, what is essentially a free-to-play card. Because this guy is a free-to-play card. It's just... He's not, like, when you say, like, oh, he's free to play, like, in your head, you're like, oh, yeah, he's going to be super easy to get and stuff like that. And it's like, well, no, unfortunately, Jackie Chun right there is not going to be very easy to get. Um, those Dragon Ball Saga units are nightmares to try and pull, dude. That's, I, I mean, it, I, I guess it's frustrating for me, right? Because, like, a lot of the only units in the game I don't have rainbow, it's just, like, various world from units that I just cannot pull, right? And it's like, every tournament, I'm grinding the hell out of it doing a bajillion pulls and um still not able to pull out these cards like this 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 guy right here this full power jackie chun i actually did not i i don't have him at all like even as ssr he came out over a year ago now last march uh and i have not pulled him from that dragon ball saga summon banner to be fair though there's only been like three or four four world tournaments i feel like in the last year right so it's not even like there's really been that many opportunities um, to potentially get these cards, right? Like, here, let me go ahead and jump in. Um, and I want to see all the world tournaments for the last year on JP. So JP had a world tournament in December, um, October, August, May, and March. So this right here, this is going to be the sixth world tournament where this full power Jackie Chun has actually been a unit. Uh, that you potentially could pull. All right, so I kind of want to 
I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna. We're gonna leave him in slot one. Defensively, I think at this point he probably is actually going to be taking double digit damage, even from this blue Goku. Like I think he actually he's easily gonna be taking double digit damage from this blue Goku. It's the hits right here in front. These are gonna be very painful, right? Yeah, 50k basically. But after he super attacks. Um, I don't think we have anything to worry about in terms of damage from this Goku. So, uh, I, I'm, I'm liking, the, yeah, yeah, double digits right there. Jackie Chun is good. He, this is an outstanding unit. Um, if you're able to get your hands on him, he's definitely, like, a very good card to run uh, on the Kamehameha category team. I mean, we're deep here in the Legendary Goku event, and he's still taking double digit damage. That's pretty effective, right? Um, I feel like he, his best role, obviously would be to run him as a floating type unit here on the Kamehameha team. Like, it, like you're outside of me, like, actually just, like, showcasing him right now. Like, he obviously is not a unit you're going to rock on rotation, like, probably almost ever. Because, like, defensively, he can get to some good numbers. But he doesn't really have, like, great defensive utility or anything like that. But, I mean, I, I would argue with, with su such a coveted support type ability, Kamehameha category allies key 3 and 30% attack. Again, that's just, that's really good. That's really powerful. And it's going to make this full power Jackie Chun a very solid card moving forward. So let me know what you guys think of him. I think he's fantastic. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all next time.